He was on a one-day business trip to Baton Rouge. One day. But they found him rolled up in plastic and in a rug dumped in a vacant lot. Nathan Millard was dead. And the police said it was no foul play. And then they arrested Derek Perkins, a known drug dealer. And then today we get new information that Nathan Perkins allegedly drove around with Nathan Millard's body in his car, possibly for four days, finally deciding to dump the body when, quote, the smell became too strong. What happened and why is it still no foul play? Doesn't make a lot of sense to me either. Joining me now is Kieran Chawla. She's an investigative reporter in Baton Rouge. Kieran, this seems to change the metric a lot for me. If somebody's driving around with a body in his car for a couple of days, even one day, uh, why hasn't this changed profoundly from a no foul play necessarily? Well, I think, again, it goes back to Baton Rouge police is now sitting here and saying, well, wait, that's not what we meant. We didn't mean that there was no foul play on the actual investigation. What we meant was there was no trauma to the body. And unfortunately, it's one of those that you kind of have to do some damage control in this case. But yes, unfortunately, that's what's really made headlines here in Baton Rouge that, wait, police said no foul play, but then an arrest has been made and an arrest has been made in the Nathan Millard disappearance and death case now. So I want to run through a little bit of a timeline here, what the police have released. Uh, he left the Happy's Irish pub uh, fairly drunk after 11 p.m. And then he's seen at a Greyhound bus station, uses his bank card to get cash, hooks up with Derek Perkins and apparently allegedly some prostitutes, last seen alive at 4.30 a.m. at a gas station. Witnesses say they saw Millard overdose at a house on Lori Burgess Street. Coroner doesn't think this smells right, says uh, there are holes in this investigation. Nathan's wife thinks that there are holes in the investigation. But Nathan's best friend has said, and his name is Devin, that Nathan struggled with a history of alcohol and substance abuse. So where do we stand with the investigation, with the toxicology reports, and, and how all of those factors now create a narrative? So we did a special yesterday, and we spoke in depth to our coroner here, the East Baton Rouge Parish Coroner, Dr. Bo Clark, about the specifically no foul play. But he even told us back then that there were possibly three charges. Now, as far as the toxicology, what he explained to us is that there are only two places in the country who actually do an in-depth toxicology report. So it's been sent off there, and he's asked for an advance panel, meaning they're going to check for everything. And if there is something that the toxicologist there finds that, hey, there seems to be this in possibly his system, they will then call back to Baton Rouge and say, you might want to also order this in that advanced panel. But again, that can take up to 10 weeks total. It could be earlier than 10 weeks, but a maximum at least we're talking, what, two and a half months right now. But Kieran, let me tell you, uh, witnesses saying that Nathan Millard overdosed at a house on Lori Burgess Street, that sounds like uh, it's ripe for a further investigation because if somebody supplied him with lethal fentanyl or if somebody supplied him with any kind of lethal drug, that can be a felony murder. So I'm curious about them taking the attack, d d drug addiction in his past or alcohol addiction in his past aside, taking the attack that somebody out there may have given him lethal drugs. Are they on that tack or are they just not saying it out loud? To me, they're not saying it out loud. Um, Baton Rouge Police is not a big fan of mine, so they're not talking to me directly. But his wife has been screaming this from the very beginning. She has admitted to me that, yes, my husband was a recovering addict. His best friend even admitted that, yes, he had been clean for 15 months. His best friend even told me yesterday in our report that he's not the type of person to get hooked up with prostitutes, and those women had to be friends of Perkins and some very in information, some very detailed information coming out. But Amber, his wife, has never ever said, Hey, I don't admit that he didn't go to the gentleman's club. I don't admit that he was last seen with a prostitute, but that does not make it okay that he ends up dead. And then all of a sudden, you're claiming that this was all Nathan's fault. I'm not saying that Nathan Agreed. didn't put himself possibly in some of these situations, but at the end of the day to say this is 100% on Nathan, you don't roll yourself up in a rug in plastic and then end up in an abandoned area.
Amen. Uh, Kieran, Chala, thank you for this. And will you continue to update us on this case when we learn more? Because I feel like we're just on the verge. You got it. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.